Hey, Hudson Henry here to talk a little bit about how On One's Perfect Photo Suite 8 has become an integral part of my post-production workflow. I'm a professional photographer in Portland, Oregon, and I'm just generally a guy who's at his happiest with a camera in his hand and some good light to create images with. I want to focus today on how I use perfect effects to quickly and efficiently finish my images to give them the look and feel that I'm after at the end of the workflow process. And that efficiency translates directly into more time doing what I love out in the field photographing. The image that I want to talk about today is one that I just love that I created this winter on the Columbia River. It's an ultra high resolution panoramic merger made of actually 13 uh, D800 files, 13 36 megapixel files. So the, the resultant panoramic is actually about 125 megapixels. As you can see, it's, it's just infinitely enlargeable and it, it looks great printed huge, which is one of the reasons I love to do these. I like to make big prints. Another thing that draws me to creating panoramic mergers is the complexity of creating them. It's really more of an old school, large format style of photography that, that forces you to really meter the scene as a whole despite only looking at one piece of it at a time through your viewfinder. Uh, it's a more of a challenge to compose. You have to use a panoramic nodal adapter to really get the images to line up properly in post-production. But setting all that aside, you know, you want to make sure that you compose the image with enough to either side of the important content that you can crop into it. You know, here I don't really care about this riverbank, but I made sure to include it uh, on the other side. I have my friend Rick. I love him, but he's not important to this image. But I made sure that I swung far enough to the right to capture everything that I wanted. And in between, I've got plenty of overlap on each image, and they all have to be metered and exposed identically. Now again, I'm going to use perfect effects to finish my image. It's the final stage to get the look that I want. In the beginning, I'm going to bring these files into Adobe Lightroom. That's my raw editor of choice. And I'm going to select them all, go into the develop module, and edit each of them identically so that I do the same white balance, the same exposure settings, just like shooting these images the same in the field I need to do the raw adjustments identically before taking them into Photoshop or whatever tool you want to assemble your panoramic mergers and making them into a single wide panoramic merger file. And here you can see the entire image as I assembled it in Photoshop. And then I'm going to do some cropping to get it down to sort of the vision that I have. And, and this, it's pretty good. I'm pretty excited about it. As I, as I take a look at this image, I'm using tab key here to hide my panels in Lightroom. You know, this is a good looking image, but I know that with perfect effects, I can get it looking even better. One of the things that I really love about Perfect Photo Suite 8 is how seamlessly it integrates with Lightroom and Photoshop. Here, if I want to go into Perfect Effects, I just go to the File menu, plug in Extras, and choose Perfect Effects, and it will render that image in the Perfect Photo Suite 8 Perfect Effects module. Now, this can take a little bit of time, uh, even if you're using a computer as, as fast. I've got a, one of the brand new Mac Pros the 2014 Mac Pros, and it's still with the 125 megapixel image, it's got a lot of data to render. But one of the wonderful things about Perfect Effects and the whole Perfect Photo Suite 8 is how well it handles these huge files. I'm consistently blown away by it. When I begin finishing an image in Perfect Effects, generally the first filter I apply is Dynamic Contrast, and Natural is usually my starting point. This filter adds a ton of pop, a lot of mid-tone contrast, a little bit of sharpening. There you can see it. And it, it does it in a way that lets me maintain a ton of control over where it's doing it. Here, I have a lot of fine details in the trees. That's why I've zoomed in to sort of see all these small branches. I can, I can add contrast in just those fine detail areas of the image. You see there, I've, I've put way too much. If I pull this slider back, I can actually get this dreamy blurred effect in the small details. In, the, in this image, you know, I want to add some nice pop and contrast, but not too much. There, I, I really like, wow, it's a huge difference. I really like that effect. And I want to also probably play a little bit with the medium details in this image. That's where, say, these tree reflections meet the water. And, and you know, again, I could overdo it. 
it's also going to affect the finer details a little bit, but, but mainly it's just working in the area of the image that I want to play with. Here, I'm going to tone that down just a little bit. If we zoom back out and we look at this image as a whole, if it had more detail in the sky, if it was a less foggy day, if there were blockier, bulkier clouds, then the, the large details would make more of a difference. In this image, there's not really that much large detail to, to worry about adding contrast to, so I'm just going to leave that slider pretty much be. Now I want to add another effect on my filter stack, another filter. Um, so I'm going to create a new layer, and I want to add just a little bit of warmth, a little, a little um, sunshine. Sunshine is one of my favorite filters in Perfect Effects and it's going to just warm this entire image up a little bit. We'll see the effect. It's pretty dramatic. Now, if I zoom in here a little bit, I really like the effect in the trees and on the water. It's just a nice warmth that it adds. It's a little more than I might want. I'm going to turn that effect down just a little bit. The problem is, and this isn't that big a problem because of perfect effects, amazing adjustability, it's kind of blowing my sky out a little bit. So I'm going to go into my blending options here and I'm just going to have it protect highlights and its application of this filter. And there you see my sky coming back. I'm getting all that detail back that I had lost. And now it's really just applying that to the darker and mid-tones of the image. And I really like that effect. I just think it's, it's a warmer, it's more pleasing look. Uh, and to just add one more little bit of finishing detail to this image, I'm going to add one more filter to my filter stack, and that's going to be a, a big softy vignette. I, I, I love the way that that sometimes focuses the eye in on what's important in the image. And again, this effect there, we've got it darkening the edges a little bit. I think it's a, a little extreme, so I'm going to change. I'm going to get rid of this blending option so I, I can see the effects sliders a little bit better here. And I'm going to just just turn it down a touch I'm gonna, or turn it up, you know, the, the darkness of the, of, the, of the vignette. So now that I'm done, I'm going to hit tab to get a little bit bigger view and I'm going to toggle the filters that I've applied in Perfect Effects. Wow! Just in three quick moves with, with more control than I ever imagined in my old workflow process, I've gotten this image just to the look that I want. Perfect Effects has really changed the way that I look at my workflow and made it so much more efficient. I'm spending a lot more time out in the field creating big panoramic mergers like this instead of sitting at the computer trying to get the look that I want.